Thank you. Um, I've been really lucky for the last 40 years of my life to travel to some of the best and most remote parts of this country, and I call it home. The shadow on the ground is the, the right sort of mark to leave on the country, and that's about our importance, I think, given the scale of the place. Um, when I was a student, I avoided um, practising in an architect's office by taking a double-decker bus around Australia and tormenting children about the environment. <laughs> that was my first home away from Sydney, and it taught me a lot about the edges of Australia. It was my one-year home, and I learnt a lot, probably more than university. This was a, a crazy scheme, um, a building that, where the homes that people lived in were um, greenhouses on a massive structure that covered Paddington, so I thought very relevant for tonight. Um, you could say this was either idyllic or you could say it was madness. Um, it was called Eden, there's a, a manly ferry at the bottom and there's a Paddington Terrace house. It, it was a, a star in a movie made by a great Australian director, Phil Noyce. Um, I was homeless when I designed it, and it earned me more money designing madness than I would earn in five years now. There's something to be said about the madness of movies. Um, Jorn Utzon said no architect should be allowed to practice unless they've designed, their own, and designed and built their own house. You should be your own victim. This is my shed on the northern bay of Pittwater on a very steep cliff. It's very small. It was below legal size when I built it. I've lived in it for 25 years. And what it tells me is that as I live there longer, the house diminishes in importance and the place that it's built in is really the home you live in and that's what gains importance. And I think that's the most important lesson of all. Um, not much to show of that house, very simple. We can just look at it for a minute. My other great home I was introduced to by this traditional Aboriginal man called Yami Lester. This picture's taken in the central desert of Australia, one of the most beautiful parts of this country. Yami was the boss of a health service. He, he asked me to join a team to stop people getting sick, a one-line brief, in 1985. He was blinded by atomic tests, but he's the most sighted man I've ever met. If you lived in this house in a small community in central Australia in 1985, you had about 20 years life expectancy than me, and you had 80 times more chance of visiting a hospital in the first five years of life than I would have in Sydney. 29 years later, we've done, we've improved 8,000 houses around Australia for over 50,000 Aboriginal and Islander people. We've turned the top into the bottom, not new houses, just improving existing. And it proves that you can work and make a difference and improve health. If you lived in this house in the central desert in the mid-80s and you were a child, you had 90% chance of having trachoma. Within five years would have reduced your eyesight and if not blinded you for the rest of your life. Water was one solution, but working with some very talented local and introduced people, we learnt that you could, by simple measures, control dust, which scours the eye and lets the trachoma bug in. You could also reduce flies, not with a spray can, but with very clever techniques. Re reduce their food, which is animal dung. You end up with sight. 80% reduction in trachoma, and you can see the home in which you live. If you live in New York, and you live in homes that look like the ones on the right, you'd think that would be a very different paddock to living in Australia. The green numbers show the chance of your house having electricity, being safe, a working shower or a working kitchen, not much different to Australia. If you live in this house in Nepal and you have this stunning view of the Himalayan range, you live to your mid-40s, that's life expectancy. And the reason for this, this village had no toilets, toilets on the ground, the to human waste makes you sick. And there's some of the people. The main victims though are women and children who cook in enclosed houses on fires made from green timber. The poorest people can't afford fuel, they use green timber. The smoke gives them respiratory illness and they die in their mid-40s. The solution? We take animal waste, we take human waste off the ground, we put it into a chamber underground with no moving parts. It produces three to four hours of cooking fuel a day, free to the household with no smoke. 
You take shit off the ground, less gut problems. You take smoke out of the house, less respiratory problems. Life expectancy increases and illness decreases. In Nepal, we're not building things. The toilets and the systems underground are pieces of technology. They're important, but we're actually making better homes for people who look like this. And I always stress, these people have names, they have families, and they look just like this. They have kids just like you and I. Finally, if we go to a place like this, if we lived in a house or a shack in one of this place in South Africa amongst 250,000 others, we have a, a fair chance of contracting cholera, typhoid, and the highest chance of being killed by violence in Africa. 250,000 people share tin sheds, and in the middle of this madness, four extraordinary heroic Africans who live here try and keep some toilets going. They ring and say they need a hand. So what better job than trying to keep a few toilets going to reduce typhoid and cholera in this setting? That's what they look like. We do some incredibly basic work. We get better toilet systems, a few things that can give them a hand and make their life easier, and a few skills and a few tools. We go from before to after. We've saved millions of litres of water, more access by thousands of people a day to improve not their houses, but the home environment they live in. What we've learnt of this work over all the years, it's never been about religion, skin colour, the work is always about the most basic poverty, grinding poverty. It's about lack of home, not house, but home. And with some simple measures, you can radically improve people's day-to-day -day life. Thank you very much.